Also, we're moving out, and so everything's really messed. This is how you know we live in Tallahassee. There's sirens. That's the sweet sound of home. You know what I mean? Hi, welcome to my $300 a month college apartment tour. I'm very sweaty. I live five minutes from Florida State University. The location's really great because it's really close to the film school. Just a warning, this is not an aesthetic apartment tour. It's not like, oh, I pay $300 a month, but I like make it work. Like it's really cool and hip and well designed. It's not, I live with three men, so it's like really almost never clean. We're moving out, so there's boxes and there's a lot of random crap everywhere, but I'm gonna show you anyway because I move out in like four days and if I don't make this video now, I never will. Why don't we? Head on in. <laughs> Welcome to our home. Please take off your shoes because we do run an Asian household. Okay, so you walk in and to the left is the laundry room. Laundry. This is our sign that reminds people to take off their shoes. That is of the utmost importance. Respectful to take your shoes off. It makes the most amount of sense. I don't know. Like, why would you want to? Anyways, storage cleaning things like i said nothing nothing crazy this is a realistic college apartment tour my roommate andres's room he already moved out and he's going to be living somewhere else next year very sad this is my room i live in a a room <laughs> just kidding that's a bad joke <laughs> this is the pantry there is a lot of food that we will not be able to finish in the next few days so that'll be really fun to figure out welcome to the kitchen <laughs> Okay. Yeah. This is the kitchen. It's almost never clean. There's a lot of cooking that goes on in here because pretty much all of my roommates cook. There's usually a huge stack of dishes, but I actually attended to that yesterday. People here don't really like to do dishes. We all have different standards of sanitation, but that's okay. We had a very big problem when all four of us were living here where there was just never enough freezer space. We are also a Costco household, so we do enjoy buying in bulk. We got a fridge. We got a dishwasher that doesn't close entirely. We have an oven that hasn't been cleaned in a gazillion years. This is my air fryer. This is my rice cooker. Sometimes rice just sits in there for days because my roommates don't like to use Tupperware, apparently. We also have a very handy dandy microwave and a toaster oven. This is the living room. This entire place came unfurnished, so we really had to like buy a lot of different things. And also nobody wanted to decorate, so I kind of took matters into my own hands. And I just printed out a bunch of these from like various Instagram accounts that I admire and I follow. Probably my favorite part of this apartment is the window. There's a gigantic window and you can look at the parking lot. And I live right next to a nightclub. I live next to Baja's, which I've never actually been to, but on Friday nights, certain nights, it does get very loud, which is probably why the rent is so cheap. It's really weird in my bathroom. It like perfectly echoes the sound of the music. So sometimes when it's Friday night and I'm in my bathroom, I can literally like hear exactly the words of the music and everything. The acoustics just work out perfectly somehow. But yeah, it's actually not a bad view. You can people watch, you can see a lot of cops in the parking lot because drunk people are crazy. But yeah, sunrises and sunsets can be really nice. And it's just a quality, quality large window that we've been blessed with in this apartment. This is, um, an Asian instrument of sorts that was passed down to us from another member of the Asian Student Association. I don't remember what it's called. If I do, I'll put the name of it here. It's supposed to be on a stand and then it's supposed to be horizontal and you like play it that way. But yeah, this is, um. what do you call the things that have to, that are passed down from generation to generation? Do you know, you know the name? Hereditary? No, it's like a, a, the thing. This was passed down to my friend Kimmy, which she used to live here. She will pass it down to someone else when she graduates. I don't know, somebody made this a thing, but it's in our apartment now and it has some sort of significance. This is my friend David's room. He's a frat boy. I love the computer science majors. It's kind of funny because like everyone around me is like computer science or computer engineering. And I'm just like the one girl and I'm also like the weird artsy kid. Don't know how I ended up here. We go around, we got our TV. This is my friend Kevin's room. For the first year that we lived here, 
Uh, his girlfriend Kimmy also lived with us even though her name wasn't officially on the lease and she doesn't have a parking pass she just lived with us for a while we essentially lived as five people in four bedrooms which is why freezer space was always an issue he just got a job at google he's doing doing big things i'm really proud of him here we have our rice it's in an extraordinarily large bin because we are a white rice household everyone here eats rice like i said Asian household, so we just buy it in bulk from Costco and split it. There's pretty much always rice here because we eat it with every meal. I say Asian household, but Andres is Hispanic. He also participates in the white rice consumption, so we'll just count him as Asian. Let's go to my room! I can show you what the inside of the bedrooms look like. This is my room. This is where I film YouTube videos. This is where I have lived for two years. Right now it's extremely empty because I just sold my bed and I'm in the process of selling a lot of my other furniture. I'll insert a clip of what it looked like when I had a bed in here because I had quite a large bed. I made the extremely space conscious choice to get a loft bed off of Amazon because I was like, this is kind of a small room and I just want to make the most out of it. This papazan is from home. This is not to sell. I've had this for a long time. It's a fan favorite. All my friends like to sit in it and claim it as their own. You can only really fit one person comfortably. If there's two people in it, you kind of have to cuddle. This is my closet, just so you can see the size of it. Please ignore how messy it is. A human for scale. What if I just disappear into my closet? See you later. Just kidding. Closet. Pretty standard. Cool. This is the bathroom. It's a bathroom. There's no tub in the shower. It's a pretty small shower. Got your toilet. You got your sink, your mirror, you got some of this. When I came back to my apartment after quarantining in Orlando with my family, there was quite a bit of mold. That's Florida, I guess. It was fine. We figured it out. This is an ominous red button. I've never pressed it and I never will. So this will forever remain a mystery in my life. What if I just press it? I just realized that this is probably the last video I'm gonna film in this room, which is crazy because I think the majority of my videos have been filmed here. <sighs> Today is Wednesday, July 28th, and I move out this Saturday on the 31st, so I've only got three days left here. So I was like, if I'm gonna make this video, I have to do it now. I only really decided yesterday that I was actually gonna make this video. It had been floating around in my head for a while. My rent is $300 a month. People would probably be kind of curious what an apartment like that would look like. But as I've gotten closer to moving out, I've realized that this place is so much more than just an apartment. So many things have happened here. So many relationships have happened here. We've had parties here. We've had potlucks here. We've had game nights. We've pre-gamed here. There's so many people associated with this place and therefore a lot of emotions associated with this place. I wanted to make this video kind of as like a time capsule. I'm wrapping up a chapter of my life. I went to FSU for four years and I've lived here for two years. This place holds a lot of memories. Um, the premise of this video is that this is not just an apartment, it's a place that we've lived for two years, which is a pretty significant portion okay. of our adult lives. We've lived here for two years, you only lived here for one, but like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. this, it's, it's a significant portion of our adult lives. And It was a time, an era. This isn't just an apartment, this is a place that has a lot of memories associated with it, a lot of people associated with it, and therefore a lot of emotions associated with it. I want you to like, think back, think back to the last two years! Um, I've been thinking back. And we'll just start with your name, your major, and like what year you are. Uh, my name is David. I'm a computer engineering major. I'm like, I, I don't want to say the year because it's like a lot of years. I, I had to take a break from school, alright? I don't know what to tell you. I'm Kevin Nguyen. I'm a computer science major. And I just graduated spring 2022. Hello, my name is Kimberly Lee. My major is computer science. I'm going into my final year. My name is Andres Ponciano. Andres Ponciano. When I first moved in, I was a junior, and now I'm a second year grad student, but in computer science as well. What's the best part of living here? Apartment 302. The rent. The best part is, first is location. Like, just distance from school. 299 rent, to be honest. Best part of living here? Mm, <laughs> I'd say it's pretty cheap. Dude, I'm s it's so cheap. 
when I first walked in here and I was like, damn, it's like $300 or something. This might be bunk as hell. And then I walked in and I was like, wow, this is like, ooh, the walls are kind of painted. It doesn't look too grimy. This could work, you know? I mean, I really liked the couch too. I nap a lot on it. <laughs> I remember I would just sleep on the couch and wake up at like 2 in the morning and be like crap and I'd go to my room What makes this apartment great is like the roommates that I live with and being able to have like people over hang out in here It's just this place is chill. It's the place I come home to and I realized like oh, okay I can just like relax now. It's fun. It's fun here You just come out into the common area and then slowly other people would come out in the common area And everyone's just doing their own thing But then eventually you somehow convene into a social functioning glob and then we just talk I think it's also very easy to get along with everyone that lives here. I don't think we ever had any issues. Coming out and then having people like watching something and I'll just sit down and watch it too. It's nice. The best part of living here is definitely just the people. Pretty much everyone that comes around here is a part of the Asian American community. And it's just a community where we all embrace each other. And it's the community where I really found my people in college. Like college would have been so shitty if I had never found the people that are in my life now. The worst part of living here. Worst part of here is Bajas, most definitely. Oh my god. There's this club called Bajas, like straight out there. And sometimes it's not even Bajas that's raging music. It's the McDonald's drive through. The worst part is my room is so friggin' hot all day because the sun like rises on this side. In the morning, I'm just waking up sweaty as hell. On the weekends, it's like I hear the Bajas music. There's a downstairs neighbor that will just play music out of his window until two in the morning. That is the worst part. And it's like the same songs every time. It's not like good music. Ugh. What's the worst part of living here? The cleanliness. Oh my god. The sink was always piled with dishes. I'm not gonna name who, but it definitely wasn't you or Kevin or Andres. But I didn't name anyone else. The worst part is the dishes are not done. I'm not blaming anybody, but it's not me. <laughs> worst part of living here is definitely just like, it's never clean. <laughs> it's fine. We're moving out soon. What's the worst part of living here? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> the bad memories, I think. What was and wasn't anymore. I'll leave it at that. Best memory in this apartment. Um, falling in love. <laughs> I think the part that hits the hardest is that my entire college relationship happened in this room. Basically, I moved in and we got together like pretty much the next week. Like he helped me move in and this is where we had our first kiss and he stayed the night like all the time. I remember literally on our one month anniversary, I just made him a key because I was just really sick of answering the door all the time. Looking back, it's kind of crazy that it only took me a month to give him a key. We stayed together for a long time. So I'd like to think I'm just a good judge of character. I remember there was a point where he was just always here even when I wasn't like I would have a really long day of classes or a really long day on set and I would come home and my favorite person would be there and so were my best friends because I live with them there's just something so special about that because besides college there's probably not gonna be a time in your life where you live with your best friends or even live close to them this is a period of our lives when pretty much everyone has roommates and we're all young and we're all figuring things out and we're like meeting new people and trying new things and just opening ourselves up to the world and all it has to offer. At least my favorite part for me was when we f were first moving in, it felt like exciting, you know? Like it was my first time moving in with friends. Alex and the rest were like living downstairs and I was like, oh my God, I'm, go I'm gonna be around so many people that I like, like and that I enjoy being around. And I don't know, life was kind of exciting at the time. The craziest thing about the first year of living here was there were so many people coming in and out. There was a point where all four of us were in relationships and all of our significant others were here all the time because they were sleeping over and hanging out and cooking here and studying here. We also had friends that lived on the first floor that would just come in and hang out with us whenever. And so there was always something going on. There was always someone to talk to. People were playing Smash in the living room all the time and the sink was never not full of dishes, <laughs> but I appreciated my roommate's girlfriends because they clean a lot more than the guys did. Actually, one of my favorites is definitely seeing Andre sit on this couch right here. And back when he and David played Smash together a lot, David would beat him every time. So every morning during our first year here, I would see him on the couch playing Smash and practicing really intently eating, what was the cereal called? Cocoa Pebbles, that's what it is. He's eating Cocoa Pebbles. And I just thought that was, that was so funny. I remember at the beginning when we first moved in, I just wanted to annoy David. So I would just go up to his room, like knock on his door 
and just be like, what's up? And I would do that all the time. And I still kind of do, you know? <laughs> and now he, do he does it as well. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And like Alex would do it as well. We would get in on it. And we would mess with David all the time. Uh, good times. I think a lot of them were just hanging out with Andres. I guess I have like recency bias, but when it was just the two of us, it was like a vibe. Cause we were both hanging on my thread, you know? So we'd like come out and I'd see him like super disheveled and I'd be coming out of my room at like three in the afternoon. <laughs> and we had this thing where like, I stay up really late and he wakes up really early. I'll hear him in the kitchen at six in the morning. <laughs> and sometimes he'll hear me in the kitchen at like five in the morning. <laughs> and we knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> A few Fridays ago, I think two Fridays ago, David, Andres, and I were just all sitting in the living room. We just like listened to Joji. We watched sad videos because we were all down bad from like whatever emotional relationship bullshit was going on in our lives. It was a really nice night where we just let ourselves feel what we needed to feel and we were all just kind of there for each other. Do you have a, a funniest memory? The condom story is always pretty funny. <laughs> Definitely the debates about the condom. We can't, we still can't figure it out. It will forever be a mystery uh, i will still to this day it's not me the condom story okay so i found an empty condom wrapper barely underneath the couch and i was like wait whose is this because i knew it wasn't mine and so i took a photo of it and i sent it to the roommates group chat and i was like what's going on here and to this day every single couple has denied that that condom wrapper was theirs we still have no idea whose condom wrapper it was or why anyone would be having sex on the couch because there's no privacy <laughs> the couch is in the middle of the fucking apartment. It will forever remain a mystery. <laughs> Do you have a theory? I mean, if everyone's gonna watch this, I don't wanna like throw them under the bus. Kevin and Kim, I know it was you, all right? Like, it can't be anyone else. I'm sorry. Overall, the best memory is just spending time with everyone, even though everyone's leaving. But that's okay. What does this apartment mean to you? Looking from the beginning of this apartment to the end of this apartment, I do get a little emotional, like, moving out. At the beginning, you know, the junior year, it was a period of, I was really unsure about what I was going to do. It was even computer science a thing that I could do for the future? The people that I, like, spent time just, just here, it just meant so much that I spent two years here with, with you and then with Andres and David. This apartment represented like growth to me. It represented a period in my life where I was young and I could do stupid stuff here and I could be kind of like a free, a free spirit here. That's kind of what this apartment means to me. It's been many things, you know, it's not just one thing. Like there's happiness, there's like sadness, it's like memories, good and bad, feeling of home, you know, just a lot of things. I just want. It's like a really friendly, and safe environment and it's just nice that everyone is able to work together it's like a little haven for all of us i think to come back to at the end of the day this place was home base for me not just in the sense that like it's my room but also i knew i had people here that were here for me whenever i needed them i hate that tallahassee is so hard to leave but that's just because there's just so many amazing people that I've met here. It's all gonna be different. We can FaceTime, we can text, but it's never gonna be the same as just living five minutes away from each other because everyone lives in your campus. Just texting or calling someone and being like, hey, like, do you wanna get boba? Do you wanna get dinner? Do you wanna come over and like watch a movie or play something? And it's, it's that's something that can only happen in college and I'm, I'm just gonna miss that so much. The proximity and just spontaneous hangouts, having your favorite people just so accessible to you all the time. Like that is just so special. If there's like an idealistic like college roommate experience, what we had was very similar to that where it was like just super relaxed and then you'd have like those nights where we just like stay up late and talk about random things. We wouldn't really be able to find that anywhere else at any point in your life, you know? Once you're like after college and you're working like a nine to five, you're never gonna come over and just chill out on your couch on a Tuesday until like one in the morning talking to your roommates, you know, because you guys got work in the morning. Why are you gonna miss it this apartment? The people, definitely. I know that everyone's not gonna leave leave you know like my life but it just so happens to be that way often and i wouldn't want to lose y'all but of course distance you know comes in the way when you're just like far apart and that's fair so that's why i would miss like getting to speak and see everyone i was gonna say the memories i guess in a way they're still physically here but like once i leave like they're not and then i can never come back you know, and it's never gonna be the same.
I won't be able to ever come back here again and see the place where I, I grew. Just I, I had so many memories and I want to move out, but at the same time, I kind of don't want to move out. But what I miss the most? I mean, I don't know yet, you know? I think like you have to like move on because if I say what I miss the most now, it's just like me assuming. But once it's gone, then I'll actually know. But what do I think I'll miss the most? The couch. The TV. It's your TV, you're taking it. I know, but the couch and TV is a combo. How do you feel about us moving out? It breaks my heart. It's really hurting me. Most of the people I care about are just moving away. I still have friends. It's just the ones that really matter. That's okay. I'd rather... I'd rather want you guys to be happy. The next time that we all see each other, maybe we'd all have better stories to tell. How do you feel about moving out? Because today is the day that you're leaving. Yeah, yeah, I'm leaving today. Um, so emotions must be like... They're very, very heavy. Um, feels like I'm not ready, you know? But I'm like being forced to by life. That's all I can say right now. Is there anything that you want your future self to remember about this period of your life? You know, at the beginning, when I first moved in, I was a person that had a lot of a lot of doubts. Mainly, it was around, am I good enough to do anything and succeed at anything in life? I realized that what makes you successful is not being naturally skilled at something or being the quickest learner. It's about showing up and doing it every day. Wherever it takes you, it takes you. You don't have to put pressure on yourself. I learned that I don't want to like live life with any more regrets. Also, I don't want to live a life that other people want me to live. I just want to live my own life, and I only have one shot at it. I imagine myself being older and looking back at this and like seeing myself here and, and be like, okay, yeah, I, I was a, I was a dumbass back then, but I'm, ha I'm happy I've learned the lessons that I did. So as you say, two years ago, you had a lot of doubt and you weren't sure if you were good enough. You want to mm -hmm. tell what your next big thing is? Yeah. So I'll be a software engineer at Google. I remember specifically my junior year. I didn't even bother applying to stuff like Microsoft, Facebook, and Google because I just didn't think I was good enough. And looking back now, that was definitely a mistake. Back then, I thought software engineers were like the smartest people, but now I realize like software engineers aren't shit. They're just like normal people like me. Like when I look at myself, I don't consider myself to be like uber smart or anything. I'm just like a normal person. Really, I was just making a big deal out of the profession, telling myself, you know, these people are too smart. I can never reach this level. The moment I stopped making a big deal about how smart these people were, I could see the improvement in myself. How I came from being paralyzed to being able to, to work towards my goals. Is there anything you want your future self to remember about this period of your life? Everything. There was a time when I would feel like kind of empty because I realized that people come and go often. And there was a period of time where I would be like, what's the point of making friends if they're just gonna leave? Even though people come and go, life is kind of like a little bus ride. Some people get on and then they'll stay on and sometimes it feels like they'll be on till the end, but sometimes they leave earlier. The memories that you spent with everyone that got on your bus will always live with you. And they continue to shoot you. Anyone that comes on my bus, I'll always greet them and wave them with a smile. One of the biggest things that I learned, especially this semester, is that like asking for help is a really good idea. Like, I'm a really private person. I don't really talk to people about my problems. But ever since I started going to therapy, and then my therapist actually encouraged me to reach out to Andres too, because like we were both going through it, but we were both best friends, that it would help. And I think it really has. One thing that I do regret these past two years is that I did not hang out with my friends enough. I was very focused on, you know, other aspects of my life, like my job search. I spent a lot of time wasted just 
thinking about where I would be if I should apply to something or I would just be sitting in my bed on my phone but I wouldn't be making any effort towards building my relationship with my friends or it's just like doing doing anything that that's really fulfilling to me I hope my future self will watch this and if, if, if you're in a, in a dark place there's, there's people you know wait, wait, waiting for you you'll always be able to find a community if you reach out you know but you have to reach out Am I am I allowed to like talk about drugs? Talk about talk about whatever you want. All right. Are you okay with talking about edibles on my YouTube channel? I don't know. <laughs> this is so underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's just some, like I come home and sleep here. <laughs> this is like oh, this couch is like unbelievably comfortable. I'm scared for y'all. In what sense? Like you guys are jumping off the great abyss into adulthood. It's time to toil for the next 30 years until retirement. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna go to sleep and then one day you'll wake up and you're like 50 years old and you're like, damn, that was it, huh? And you walk outside have to put on an umbrella because global warming is like slowly killing all of us and it's way too hot now and you can't walk in direct sunlight or you get burned. That's the reality we'll live in. We'll look back on this time and like things were so much simpler then. It's kind of dark. <laughs> I have a lot of theories about the future. I think America is going to be run by mega corporations at some point, especially because everyone in college wants to work for a corporation. It's all like fuck big corp until they're like, we'll give you 80k a year and you're like all right that's cool i like amazon go jeff bezos i'll wave at him from down here you know yeah all right so favorite jimmy john's order the, the secret is get the spicy east coast italian even though you don't like spicy food and then just ask them to remove the peppers because on the spicy east coast italian they give you double meat and then like lettuce and the mayo and like the tomato and stuff so you get that you ask them to remove the hot spicy peppers and then you get pickles and then you just get like the best sandwich that Jimmy John's can offer. Yeah, no, I definitely don't want to remember that. That was like a a secret. <laughs> because I looked it up on Reddit. I was like, what's the best Jimmy John's sandwich order? And someone's like, yeah, do this. And I was like, this sounds interesting. And I did it. And I'm like, wow. This is definitely their best sandwich. And I, I never would have tried it because it had the word spicy in it. Any uh, non-Jimmy John's related things you'd like to remember from this period of your life? These finals are killer. Because I, I scammed my way out of both of them. They were suppo I was supposed to take them Wednesday and Thursday. But you went to recess. You were like, can't do that. Yeah, no, I was like, I was Wednesday. I was like, man, my head is pounding. <laughs> I was like, professor, my internet's down. <laughs> Did you really pull that card? Yeah, and then she emailed me She emailed me back Thursday. She's like, okay, I pushed the test back for you. Let me know if your internet is still down ASAP. And I was like, yeah, it's still down. So now I'm t and so she's like, all right, I'll push it back to Friday. And then my other professor, I'm like, professor, I crashed my car. <laughs> and he's like, all right, you can take it Friday. Some ballsy moves there. I like how you use a different one for each one, just in case. Yeah. I can't get caught lacking out here, that'd be so bad. <laughs> when Kevin thought it would be fine to just walk around in his neon boxer briefs. So he just came out with his bright, like, yellow, sharpie colored underwear. And Annie was out here. And he was just proudly standing like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, bro, put on some pants. After that, he stopped doing that because everyone saw his bulge. And <laughs> I'm happy to say that it's become a frequent habit. <laughs> I used to have a hoodie and they would they would all sleep in the, the... The hood? Yeah, like the hood or the pocket. That's so cute. Yeah.